A 21-year-old kidnapper, Awal Abdul Rashid, also known as Loge, who was arrested by the Kano State Police Command, has narrated how he killed the 13-year-old female hawker, Zuera. The command spokesman, DSP Abdullahi Haruna Kiawa, told journalists that the suspect, in his confessional statement, said he lured her into an incomplete building pretending he wanted to buy what he was, she was selling. She followed him into the uncompleted building where he grabbed her hijab and tied her neck with it before slaughtering her from behind with a knife. Awal said he then buried her within the uncompleted building and later put a call across to her parents demanding 5 million naira ransom. After much negotiation, he said, they settled for 400,000 naira, but suddenly changed their mind, claiming they have discovered the corpse of their daughter. The police image maker then disclosed that the police investigations into the case have been concluded, adding that the suspect will soon be charged to court for prosecution. The prime suspect behind the alleged murder of Jennifer Anthony, a 300-level student of the University of Jaws, and the capitation of her corpse, Moses Oko, is now in police net. Oko, age 20, was on Wednesday in Jaws paraded at the Plateau State Police Command headquarters. Our correspondent reports that also paraded by some other suspects believed to have been engaged in various crimes ranging from human trafficking, kidnapping, armed robbery, and cultism. The boyfriend of the suspected killer of Inijo student Jennifer fled the scene of the heinous act at the Domo's Parsi guest house and headed for Benway State, expecting to be out of the police radar. The lifeless body of Jennifer was found on 1st of January at the guest house where she had lodged with Moses Oko. Parts of her body were harvested allegedly by the suspect. While updating journalists on their investigation so far, Plato State Police Commissioner Bartolomeo Yenka said the command launched a full man hunt on the criminal all the way to his hideout in Benway State. You should see him there. He is the one there. He was arrested in Benway State and brought down to this place very late yesterday. So I felt we should let you, members of the public and the press, to know that evil does not pay. Though the suspect Moses Oko refused to speak up, his father Joseph Oko, a lecturer at the University of Jos, however, said his son has been suffering from a mental disorder. I'm the father. I got signed that he was taking weed. And each time I had the sign, not that I will see it, but I would smell it. I will go into a hidden argument. He will say it's better than simple. The Plato State Police Command also paraded armed robbery suspect, child trafficker, and kidnappers. Police patrol team of the command attached to the Department of Operation arrested one Emmanuel Azi, age 25 years, and Benjamin Yaku, age 24 years, both mayors of Soya Village, Goji District, Basa, with two local mayor pistols, and one ammunition. According to the police commissioner, the suspects will be arranged as soon as the investigation is completed. Nigerians will go to the polls in the first quarter of 2023 to elect a new leadership at both national and state levels. Ahead of the polls, some clergymen have been advised to strike a balance between the spiritual and the political, raising once more the question as to the connection between politics and religion. Clevy TV Simeon Fonokon, who sought the opinions of FCT resident on the big issue, now reports. Prophecy may be defined as the foretelling or prediction of what is to come, or a definedly inspired prediction, instructions, or exhortation by clergymen. The issue of whether a prophecy is fake or genuine is a topic that is as old as the popular biblical adage, which says, as it was in the beginning, is now and forever shall be. Not long ago, the issue of fake prophecy again came to the fore, prompted by a warning by the government of Ghana to people it describes as fake prophets. In Nigeria today, 
it is rare to find a public office holder who is truly detached from one form of religious affiliation or the other. It is not a secret that politicians openly give in to religious sentiment while campaigning for public support. While some political office holders often misuse religion as a tool to get to power, religious leaders too sometimes explore the opportunity to gain favors from those holding public offices. Though there are divergent opinions on this, can we totally say that all prophecies are fake or false? In any case, how relevant are prophecies in Nigerian politics? More so, as the 2023 general elections draw closer each passing day. Sometimes most of the, these prophetic declarations, they don't, they don't come to pass. What we are supposed to do, we are supposed to be realists. All of them consult their, their religious leader, either Christians or Muslim, but at the end, and they all give them hope. Just play policies and as it was before that we are looking for the success. The president, that one that will be better, better for us. We should also uh, we should engage in prayer uh -huh, so that things will be okay and we'll become the jail and the jails are one. Clearview Television also sought to know from residents what are the likely implications of prophecy in the Nigerian polity. Some of the clergymen, both Muslim and Christians, some of them, they are looking for money. Therefore, they can say whatever they like. But nobody knows future except to God. To hold them responsible for their prophetic messages, they are entitled to it. They are entitled to their vision. So, if we, whoever they call, even if the person win, that does not mean that it is their prophet. Are you with now? They only speak in the direction of God. And for these prophecies and uh, the, uh, the declaration, it's not. But my own side, though, it's not good. Just leave it. You, you can fail sometimes. If you say if you say you are trying to put this prophetic declaration, you can fail sometimes. So just leave it in hand of Allah Swan Tyler. Also, many Nigerians are of the view that come 2023, the capacity of the candidate to lead the country should be the deciding factor rather than voting based on one religion or faith. They say religious leaders and political association must seek to strike a balance in educating the electorate to vote wisely for a better Nigeria. Imefonokon reporting for Clayview Television.